Good evening to us watching us in Brazil and good morning to our lecturer, Mr. Matsuda. We are about to start webinar number four of a series of lectures promoted by both the School of International Relations at Fundação Getúlio Vargas and the Japan House in Sao Paulo. Joining us from Japan tonight is Dr. Yasuhiro Matsuda, Professor of International Politics at the University of Tokyo's Institute for Advanced Studies on Asia. Mr. Matsuda received his PhD in law from Keio University in Tokyo. His professional background comprehends 16 years of collaboration with the National Institute for Defense Studies and Japan Defense Agency as an assistant and senior research fellow. He specializes in the political and diplomatic history of Asia, politics and foreign relations in China and in Taiwan, cross-strait relations and Japan's foreign and security policies. He was also a member of the Council on Foreign and on Security and Defense Capability in the New Era, the advisory group of the Japanese Prime Minister in 2010. Following this brief introduction, I will give the floor to Dr. Matsuda, who will conduct his presentation on Japan-China contemporary relations. After the lecture, we have a question and answer session. Therefore, we invite the audience to send their questions through the link made available for you during the entire presentation, so we can forward them later to the lecturer. It is important to know that all statements expressed by Fundação Getúlio Vargas employees and guests in this event exclusively represent their opinions and not necessarily FGV's institutional position. We also reiterate that everyone present here agreed to participate and have consented to be recorded in this broadcast, which will be posted later on FGV's official channels. I welcome Dr. Matsuda and thank him very much for his time. And I'll give the floor to Professor Pedro Brites, organizer of this event. Thank you very much. Thank you, Luana. Good evening, everyone. It is a pleasure to be here tonight to hear more about an important topic for contemporary international politics on behalf of FGV uh, he, International Relations. I would like to thank everyone who is attending the event and especially Professor Matsuda for kindly accepting our invitation. It is a great honor to welcome you today, Professor, and we are glad to know more about your work and your perspectives on Sino-Japanese relations. Uh, I also want to thank Japan House in Sao Paulo for the support in promoting this, this event. I wish you a great event. So may I start? Um, uh, Please, good evening. Yeah, uh, good evening, everybody. I'm Yasuhiro Matsuda from the University of Tokyo uh, in Japan. Uh, thank you uh, very much for having me uh, here. And uh, 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 let me uh, give you a, a, a lecture about uh, uh, security issues in the Japan China relations. And uh, uh, let, please let me share the slides first. Here, oh, this is the rest. I think that's well. I think it, it, it's taking time. Uh, can you see the slides uh, with full screen? Maybe no, right? Not full screen yet, Professor. No. Oh, okay, okay. Uh, maybe it's okay. Okay, let, uh, thank you very much again. And uh, uh, let me uh, start my uh, uh, lecture first. Um, this is the uh, contents of my uh, uh, lecture today. Uh, firstly, uh, then uh, uh, I'll briefly uh, outline the uh, the uh, Sino-Japanese relations from the perspective of uh, international security uh, in the late Cold War period and the post-Cold War period. And uh, the both nations have their own uh, concerns about each other. So Japan's concerns, uh, it's increasing and also all Chinese concerns and uh, uh, both nations have uh, their own engagement in the regional security and also uh, in the crisis management efforts. And uh, 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 I, w I will uh, point out the, the room for the future cooperation. Okay. 
um, as introductions, let, let me, uh, 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 you know, point out uh, four or, or questions. What are characteristics of Sino-Japanese security relations? Um, there are uh, many uh, ways uh, of uh, describing relations, bilateral relations, but uh, for example, economic relations, political relations, diplomatic relations, and so on. But what about security relations? Is that is that a relations uh, uh, of you know, uh, you know, uh, like economic or uh, diplomatic? It's really difficult to say, you know, because uh, some uh, countries uh, uh, are dealing with uh, uh, arms trade, or uh, you know, some other uh, nations are, uh, you know, uh, um, ha have very strong uh, security ties, uh, but some others are not. Much more hostile or uh, tense relations. So, what 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 are uh, the characteristics of the security relations. And what are the uh, different intentions uh, underlying the defense exchanges between Japan and China? Um, especially uh, after uh, uh, 1980s, you know, that, that both nations uh, began to have, uh, you know, defense uh, exchanges. And, uh, but the, the relations are quite asymmetrical. And Japan and China have a very, very uh, different uh, views and restrictions uh, each other. And what are the major concerns of both sides? And this is very important uh, point. Um, Japan has its own security concerns uh, against China, and China also has the, uh, you know, a very different but still very strong concerns, uh, uh, security concerns uh, towards uh, Japan. And uh, what are the major trends in the relations? Well, let me briefly uh, uh, overview uh, the late uh, Cold War period relations. Um, hostility ended at the time. Uh, uh, you know, Japan and China are two major countries in East Asia. And now uh, China is the uh, second largest economy in the world, and Japan is the third uh, uh, largest economy. And at that, uh, in, during the uh, Cold War period, Japan was the second biggest uh, economy. Um, and in looking into the, the region, uh, Japan and China are neighbors, uh, but uh, Japan is an island country, and and China is a continental uh, uh, empire. And so uh, historically, uh, uh, China uh, uh, was um, a very uh, uh, big uh, civilization and uh, 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 taught a lot of good things uh, to Japan. So Japan and China actually share uh, uh, a lot of uh, classic, uh, classical works uh, and also uh, even share uh, same characters. So the Japanese can understand Chinese characters uh, very well uh, and took it as a, a part of its own language. So uh, the relations are very, very uh, you know, close uh, historically. But uh, the close uh, historical ties in neighbors uh, sometimes turn into a very hostile one uh, because uh, you know, the, uh, most of the wars uh, fought in the human history uh, were, were, were fought uh, among uh, neighboring nations. And uh, it, uh, it's uh, true, especially in the, uh, you know, modern uh, history. Uh, so there were two major uh, wars uh, fought in, uh, between Japan and China. And uh, the second one is the largest and also oh, Japan uh, invaded into the continental uh, part of China. It, it, uh, it, uh, 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 it was uh, eight year uh, uh, long uh, war between two nations. And immediately after that, uh, Korean War uh, uh, and Vietnam War uh, occurred and the uh, US uh, had a very uh, hostile relation with, uh, with China and uh, Japan was supporting the United States at the time. 
but in the 1970s, Sino US rapprochement uh, occurred. So the, uh, you know, Japan followed the uh, 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 step of uh, uh, the United States. But the United States couldn't uh, uh, had a, a, a normalization uh, of the diplomatic relations with China. So it was a kind of a strategic opportunity for Japan to have uh, uh, good relations with uh, China. So uh, in 1972, uh, Japan uh, utilized this strategic opportunity and had a diplomatic relations uh, with, with uh, Beijing and uh, 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 ceased uh, diplomatic relations with Taipei, uh, Republic of China. And uh, after that, uh, 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 both nations have uh, uh, concluded a series of uh, bilateral uh, agreements, uh, like uh, such as you know the the uh, aero uh, transportation uh, uh, you know uh, agreement and uh, uh, others. And uh, uh, in 1978, both nations uh, concluded the Treaty of Peace and Friendship uh, uh, and uh, started defense exchange uh, in 1974, uh, exchanges of military attaches. So that was the beginning of the uh, security relations uh, between uh, uh, China and Japan after the normalization of the diplomatic relations. And at that time, uh, uh, there was a very strategic approach uh, by China toward Japan, uh, but uh, it the bilateral relation lacked a kind of defense cooperation. It was not uh, that quick. Um, there was uh, there were some positive factors such as uh, uh, the common adversary, uh, the Soviet Union. Um, Japan had a, a, a you know a tense relations with the Soviet Union during the Cold War period. Uh, Japan and Soviet, the Soviets are also neighbors, and uh, we we had a, a, a you know the, the territorial issue. Uh, the the Japanese uh, uh, islands uh, in Hokkaido uh, were all occupied by the Soviet Union uh, by use of force uh, at the very end of the uh, uh, Second World War. Um, so. Uh, uh, and China also uh, suffered from the uh, serious uh, Sino-Soviet uh, rivalry. So actually during the uh, late 1970s and 80s, uh, Japan, US and China were in the same camp vis-a-vis uh, uh, -vis the Soviet Union. That was uh, the a very uh, positive factor in terms of the uh, good and stable uh, sino japanese relations. Uh, but there were uh, very uh, different expectations. China wanted much more strategic uh, 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 relations such as, you know, close to alliance, but Japan uh, doesn't want to, didn't want to have such a, such a deep relation with, with China because uh, Japan also wanted a stable relations with the Soviet Union. So the expectations were different and there are more negative factors. Uh, for example, Chinese uh, potential criticism against uh, Japanese militarism. Um, you know, Japan's militarism was very, very strong before uh, the World War II. And uh, yeah, because of this historical memory, I think that uh, the Chinese side uh, still had a very strong, uh, you know, criticism uh, against that. So. Uh, every time when uh, the Japanese politicians uh, raised uh, the uh, uh, different uh, interpretations about uh, past history, the Chinese have um, shown a very a strong opposition about this. So the historical issue uh, started uh, after uh, the formal uh, diplomatic relations. So before the formal diplomatic relations, they just quarrel uh, over uh, the, the sea, uh, uh, the East China Sea. So it, it's not a, you know, a, a serious issue because they're, they're, they were not uh, uh, diplomatically very close. But after the 
diplomatic relations. I think that uh, this uh, historical issue, uh, uh, you know, gradually became a very uh, serious issue. But on the other hand, uh, 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 in the post-war Japan, uh, Japan had a very strong pacifism. You know, it's a kind of a repercussion from the uh, strong militarism uh, uh, during the, uh, uh, you know, World War II. Um, actually, Japan experienced seven year long uh, uh, occupation by the United States uh, from 1945 to 1952. And uh, uh, the new constitution was actually uh, uh, written by uh, the Americans. Uh, the Japanese, uh, you know, uh, 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 edited it, but basically it was drafted by, the, uh, by Americans. So um, actually the defense related, uh, uh, you know, uh, the clauses of uh, the new Japanese uh, constitution was really weak. And uh, a lot of Japanese uh, citizens uh, simply uh, began to hate uh, the war and war acts uh, because so there were so many uh, people uh, uh, were lost uh, in Japan, not, not only, you know, Japan, uh, Japan uh, lost uh, uh, li lives by the Japanese uh, invasional acts, uh, but Japan itself also lost a lot of you know uh, the lives. So Japan Japanese pacifism was really really strong, uh, and it was so internalized. For example, uh, Japan sh uh, couldn't uh, sell any uh, arms to other nations and uh, there should be no uh, technological, uh, military technological transfer. And uh, Japan cannot send, uh, couldn't send, no, uh, couldn't send military advisory groups. And uh, uh, close ties with countries other than in the United States uh, were uh, seriously avoided. So Japan had only one single security partner that was the United States. Uh, this was a uh, constitutional uh, restraints uh, in, in Japan. So if you have a, a security relations with, with Japan, uh, this is a, a very, very difficult uh, uh, you know, obstacle. So um, on one hand, China had a concern that uh, Japan could revive its militarism. But on the other hand, Japan had a very strong pacifism in reality. And uh, yeah, there were so many restrictions about defense uh, relation with other nations. Um, so uh, uh, during the late uh, uh, Cold War period, China had a very strong ex expectations uh, towards Japan, uh, uh, which is uh, standing up and uh, standing by China and standing up toward uh, the Soviet Union and even uh, uh, and, and fight against the uh, so Soviet Union uh, with uh, China. This was um, a very strong expectation, uh, but it failed. Uh, so once uh, uh, Chinese uh, military leaders uh, such as uh, Wu Xiuquan uh, said that defense budget uh, can be uh, two percent of the GDP of Japan. Uh, he said so in 1978. And uh, uh, Japan's uh, defense expenditure is always uh, you know, less than 1% of the GDP, Japan's G GDP. So 2% means that uh, China uh, expected uh, Japan to double uh, the defense expenditure. Uh, so uh, at that time, uh, China wanted Japan to be uh, militarily much stronger. Uh, but after uh, Prime Minister Nakasone's uh, visit to Yasukuni Shrine, uh, uh, actually the Japanese Prime Ministers uh, have uh, visited uh, Yasukuni Shrine uh, for, for many times, but uh, uh, Prime Minister Yakasone, Nakasone uh, tried to make it a formal visit uh, because uh, in the past that, was a, uh, that act was a private visit. It, he tried to make it a formal visit uh, and uh, other Chinese uh, began to criticize uh, uh, this behavior. Uh, then, so a balance uh, between uh, 
expectation toward uh, Japan to be uh, much stronger militarily and uh, a potential criticism against Japan's militarism uh, uh, started to uh, lose uh, the balance. So uh, the, uh, China uh, began to criticize Japan more after this. And uh, after the Cold War, uh, you know, the defense exchanges uh, era uh, arrived. Uh, but before that, we had uh, have to, uh, you know, uh, highlight uh, the importance of Tiananmen Square incident in 1989. Uh, before that, there were some security uh, relations, you know, uh, uh, with some uh, defense exchanges, but uh, it sharply uh, dropped, uh, you know, uh, and uh, it stopped uh, uh, between two nations because. Uh, the PLA, uh, People Liberation Army, uh, used force against their own people. Uh, you know, the people were asking uh, freedom and democracy, but the uh, PLA uh, uh, started to fire uh, them. And uh, uh, so naturally, the most of the developed nations st uh, stopped their defense exchanges with uh, China, and Japan was one of them. And uh, in Japan, uh, there uh, used to be a very high uh, public affinity uh, toward China. For example, in my case, uh, when uh, uh, I started to uh, learn Chinese Mandarin uh, when, I, when I was uh, the first great freshman of the, uh, uh, during my college life, uh, the Japanese affinity toward uh, China was more than 70%, almost 80% high. Uh, but after uh, the, uh, the Tiananmen Square uh, incident, it was a huge massacre. And if you go to uh, uh, YouTube, um, you will uh, be able to see uh, uh, many, many video clips at that time. It's a, it was a very uh, hideous uh, uh, you know, uh, image. So um, sharply uh, dropped down the uh, Japanese public uh, affinity toward uh, China. So uh, both nations uh, have lost their uh, a kind of uh, uh, expectation and popularity uh, to, toward each other after uh, this uh, incident. Uh, but China had a very strategic intention to uh, ameliorate the relations with uh, Japan because uh, Japan uh, had a, a kind of guilt feeling toward uh, China uh, during the uh, wartime because uh, there are so many uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, sacrifice uh, in Chinese side. So uh, Japan, uh, relatively speaking, had a stable relation with China, even after the uh, Tiananmen Square massacre. Uh, so China uh, began to have a strategic approach to Japan uh, with very low key, and Japan side also uh, uh, found a strategic opportunity to uh, have a good relation with, with Beijing. So the emperor's uh, visit uh, was materialized in 1992. And also uh, they uh, resumed uh, defense exchanges uh, and uh, security dialogue started in 1993 and high level visits uh, uh, by the defense minister uh, started in 1995. And, uh, but still, you know, uh, it's, uh, it was described as same bed, in, uh, but different dreams regarding different defense exchanges. Because China's goals, China's targets uh, uh, for the defense exchanges with uh, Japan were, you know, uh, uh, based on expert uh, observation, uh, these uh, five uh, goals gathering intelligence in uh, Japan's self-defense forces and US forces in Japan, because US forces are, uh, you know, potential, uh, you know, uh, enemy for China, for the PLA. So gathering information and trying to erode uh, self-defense forces support uh, for the alliance with the United States, because uh, without Japanese support, US forces in Japan uh, cannot, uh, uh, you know, uh, even uh, 
uh, have a, a good uh, and a strong uh, performance uh, in the region. So uh, if uh, China can drive a, a very good wedge be between the United States and Japan, uh, US forces uh, on Japan uh, cannot work very well. And the four, uh, the third, understanding Japan's defense planning and thinking. You know, Japan's uh, Japan had a very, uh, you know, small size of the uh, military, and uh, China had a very huge size, but uh, not modernized uh, yet. So Japan's uh, defense planning and thinking uh, were a kind of a role model for, for China. So, uh, you know, learning process was very, 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 very in, in, uh, important for China. And also learning how Japan manages its military. Is, this is very, very important. Uh, so uh, they were very happy uh, about having, uh, you know, military uh, ties with Japan. And also uh, contributing the uh, Sino-Japanese relations as a whole. These uh, were uh, are seen as uh, China's goals. But Japan's goals were different. Uh, Japan's goals were uh, part of engagement policy toward China. Engagement policy uh, in the United States recently uh, were always uh, called it failed uh, and so on. But at that time, engagement policy toward China were very, very common. And Japan has been uh, you know, implementing an in engagement policy toward China. So uh, econom there were economic engagement and also political engagement and also, uh, you know, the uh, defense engagement was really an important uh, for Japan and, and try to improve transparency of both sides. Uh, why both sides? It means that uh, Japan also wanted to uh, let China understand Japan's uh, defense policy and its intention and capability and uh, try to make the bilateral, rela bilateral relations uh, better and also want China to make its own defense policy transparent. For example, China's defense budget is still very, uh, very secret. And, uh, uh, you know, the rest of the world uh, has, you know, asked China to be uh, more transparent. But uh, so far, uh, it's not in a good shape. Uh, so uh, Japan's goals are, and, and uh, China's were uh, a bit different. And uh, uh, Japan-U.S. security arrangement also enhanced uh, during the post-war uh, post war period. Uh, the joint declaration of the uh, of U.S.-Japan uh, was done in 1996, and new security guidelines uh, passed in 1997, and uh, a, a situation area surrounding Japan law enacted in 1992. And Japan has uh, changed its security policy uh, and its uh, behavior uh, outside of uh, Japanese territory uh, became much more uh, uh, positive. Uh, so, uh, you know, the, the Japan had to, uh, you know, show its, uh, uh, explain its uh, defense policy toward other nations. Um, <clears throat> Uh, and the defense exchanges at uh, that time became uh, a kind of much more symbolism centered. Uh, because uh, in, in the late 1990s and 20, uh, uh, 2000s, uh, there were a lot of problems uh, between Japan and China, especially uh, Prime Minister Koizumi uh, vis uh, began to uh, visit Yasukuni Shrine. Again, Yasukuni Shrine is a very politically sensitive uh, issue between two nations. And uh, uh, every time after his visit to the shrine, uh, China canceled, uh, canceled uh, some defense exchanges. Uh, for, exa for example, Japan's uh, Director General of J J D Japan Defense Agency, and uh, uh, again, Nak uh, Nakatani's visit to China, it occurred in 2002. I still remember very uh, clearly because I, I was almost nominated uh, a member of this uh, uh, you know, delegation uh, to China uh, because I had another business. So I, I, I didn't join it, 
But anyway, uh, uh, you know, his visit to China was canceled uh, by Chinese side. It's a very strong uh, message to, uh, from China to uh, Japan that uh, China doesn't like uh, to see uh, Prime Minister's visit to Yasukuni Shrine. And a uh, uh, delay of mutual port calls uh, from 1998 to 19, uh, 2007, it's almost nine years, almost 10 years, uh, uh, the port calls delayed. So at that time, I raised uh, uh, a new theory, uh, uh, such as safety valve theory. Uh, you know, uh, the security, uh, defense exchanges uh, had on, only had a high degree of symbolism. It is a symbol of good relations uh, between Japan and China. So uh, when some trouble occurs, um, uh, China always stop uh, uh, the defense exchanges first and uh, save the, uh, the rest of the, uh, uh, you know, bilateral relations such as Japan's official development assistance toward China. China had never canceled it, uh, but uh, you know, cancel the the uh, defense exchanges first. So, so it is it's like a safety valve, you know, cut it, uh, then save the the rest of the relations, um, because uh, J Japan China security uh, you know relations didn't have uh, an actual uh, benefit for China, such as a weapon weapons, technology, and intelligence. Um, so uh, there were only working level exchanges in the second track. And uh, th those uh, exchanges were not hold. Uh, and and uh, the, year, uh, the period of 2000, there were many, many uh, defense exchanges and like ministry, uh, ministerial level, deputy level, service chief level, security dialogue and working level mutual protocols. And they began to uh, have a, a very frequent one, but every time, uh, you know, the historical issue occurs, uh, those uh, projects uh, stop immediately. Well, uh, and uh, after the 2000, it, it, uh, the, uh, uh, China uh, began to uh, uh, you know, take off its uh, economy. So you know, now uh, uh, young students uh, may uh, see that, uh, you know, China is a very strong uh, uh, military and also economic entity. Uh, but before 1990s, China's economy was very weak and smaller uh, than Japan. But after its entry, uh, uh, to the WH, WTO, the World uh, Trade Organization, uh, uh, the economy began to uh, take off. And the time of China's rise uh, started in the, uh, in the new century. So uh, there were uh, a lot of concerns uh, from Japan, um, you know, there are many, many very, uh, you know, very different uh, concerns, such as uh, this is uh, the, uh, you know, Japan's, uh, you know, concerns to uh, China. Uh, for example, uh, if uh, Chinese economy is stagnated uh, or modernized uh, in a very smooth way, uh, or uh, China's uh, co uh, behavior becomes cooperative or much more hegemonic or unilateral, you know, uh, if you draw uh, these two lines, uh, vertical and uh, horizontal, then we can for, uh, have four different future uh, view, future scenarios of China. Uh, if uh, China is stagnated and, uh, 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 you know, hegemonic, it's going to be a rogue state. And uh, uh, China's economy is bad, but uh, cooperative. It means that uh, China becomes a failed state and the rest of the world should support it. But if uh, China's economy uh, becomes glorious, uh, then uh, uh, cooperative, it's, uh, uh, become, it uh, would become a cooperative power. But if uh, China behaves in a hegemonic way, it's going to be a hegemonic power. And four, all four, uh, uh, you know, three of them, three out of four are very uh, uh, worrisome, uh, uh, you know, 
uh, scenarios. And Japan had uh, this kind of these kind of visions. And uh, uh, China uh, began to have uh, many many anti-Japanese events, uh, especially after 2005. The anti-Japanese demonstration became very violent, and uh, it occurred in 2010, and uh, even after 2012. So the anti-Japanese, uh, you know, the trend uh, was uh, become a very worrisome situation in Japan, and also Japan, uh, China began to have a very military, uh, you know, the modernized military, but with a very low transparency. Uh, and uh, uh, there were growing risks uh, in the Taiwan Strait, especially after uh, the Taiwan Strait crisis in the mid 1990s. And also uh, China's unilateral maritime advancement in Eastern South China Seas, and including uh, Senkaku uh, and uh, a land reclamation in the South China Sea. Uh, and there are risks of accidental collisions. Uh, let me uh, see those uh, pictures. For example, uh, China's military uh, uh, defense spending uh, is high rising, and the green, uh, uh, you know, uh, green one is Japan's military exp expenditure. And uh, uh, the this rise, uh, China showed that you know this kind of uh, rise and uh, uh, exceeded Japan's military expenditure in 2007. Uh, so if you have a neighbor uh, like this, you will have a worry uh, about it. You know, this is a very uh, big jump uh, uh, of, Japan, of China. And also, uh, China uh, began to strengthen its military uh, uh, nuclear forces uh, with uh, ballistic missiles. And, uh, you know, the number and also uh, the quality were increasing and uh, uh, advancing. Uh, and most of the uh, uh, ballistic missiles in, in China were uh, intermediate ones. So it, it means that uh, there are major nuclear forces are uh, already covered uh, whole Japan and uh, uh, the East Asia. Uh, but uh, they have never announced that how many they have. So the transparency is very low. And also after uh, 2000, uh, the Chinese uh, military aircrafts uh, uh, began to have a very, very, uh, uh, you know, assertive uh, moves. And there are uh, the number of the, uh, uh, you know, scrambles against uh, Chinese aircraft, uh, Japanese uh, Air Force scrambles against, uh, you know, Chinese aircrafts. It once hit uh, more than 851 in 2016. So uh, the, uh, you know, the, actions surrounding Japan uh, became very, very, uh, you know, active. Uh, and it, it's only, uh, uh, you know, 10 year, uh, 10 year uh, changes, right? So or in the year 2009, that's only 30, 38, but in 2016, 800, uh, more than 800. It's a very big change uh, surrounding Japan. And also uh, there are uh, many uh, uh, Chinese military vessels uh, passing through uh, the southeastern, uh, uh, south, uh, south uh, western uh, islands, uh, uh, so, I'm sorry, southeastern islands or Aki Okinawa by a, a Chinese uh, <clears throat> naval fleets. It started in 2008 and in 2013, uh, the uh, the number of uh, passing reached 21st times, uh, seven times more uh, in uh, in five years. It's also a uh, worrisome situation uh, for Japan because uh, China's defense budget has uh, grown sharp in such a sharp rise, and uh, their behavior uh, became so uh, uh, many times. Uh, both in air and the, on, on the ocean. And not only this, uh, their government uh, ships, uh, you know, behavior uh, surrounding uh, Senkaku Islands uh, became that, you know, uh, 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 frequent. Uh, it started in uh, 2008 
uh, there are uh, you know maritime surveillance ships. Two ships uh, intentionally entered into the uh, territorial water of Senkaku Islands, or uh, Chinese name. Their Chinese names are uh, Diaoyu Islands, and uh, that was a very shocking uh, event because China had never uh, done this before. Uh, later, the Japanese side began to realize that this was a planned action. Uh, after 2010, uh, the, uh, the uh, fishery boat colli uh, collision uh, incident occurs. They try to send their ships uh, into the uh, contiguous water and sometimes into the territorial water. And after the 2012, uh, they began to send uh, the boats regularly and let them uh, enter into the, uh, the territorial water uh, regularly. And this is the biggest issue uh, between Japan and China uh, in terms of security uh, concerns. Uh, so as for Japan, the, uh, China began to harass uh, China, uh, Japan's uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, territory, uh, uh, remote islands, uh, starting from 2008, and now it's every every day. Right? And uh, their capability also uh, started to rise in the uh, uh, 2000s. Uh, for example, uh, China's government ships uh, was built in this way. And Japan used to have more uh, ships, uh, but now uh, China doubled the number. And uh, modern submarines, also, or you know, increased uh, starting from the 2007, and now they have uh, 52 uh, modernized submarines and uh, destroyers and frigates. Uh, look at this, uh, you know, uh, curve. It's also uh, uh, increasing almost every year, and uh, uh, there are uh, uh, fourth and fifth generation jet fighters also increasing a very, very uh, quick pace. So uh, as for Japan, uh, the neighbor, neighboring country, China, uh, is suddenly uh, uh, rising and uh, mil economy, military budget, and their capability and behavior uh, suddenly uh, uh, rose uh, in the past uh, 10 to 15 years. And, and China also had a, a very, uh, you know, uh, assertive actions in the, uh, the South China Sea. <clears throat> and the uh, US began to uh, do uh, freedom of navigation uh, 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 operations in the South China Sea. And uh, there are many, many incidents surrounding uh, the, the uh, nine dot lines, uh, 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 which uh, is proposed by, by the Chinese uh, government and uh, had many troubles with uh, Vietnam and with the Philippines and also with uh, Indonesia uh, and uh, Malaysia. Uh, so um, it's not only uh, uh, targeted Japan's uh, you know, behavior, it's uh, a kind of multi-directional uh, behavioral changes of uh, China. So land reclamation was also or became a very, very uh, uh, big issue uh, between China and other nations, including uh, the United States. So uh, these are the concerns by Japan. And there are also oh, 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 Chinese concerns, right? Uh, you know, you know, when Japan had a strong concerns uh, toward China and North Korea, North Korea also developed this, uh, you know, nuclear uh, weapons and their missiles are covering uh, Japan. Uh, so Japan uh, enhanced uh, its uh, security alliance with uh, the United States. And China sees it's a kind of a encirclement efforts uh, toward uh, China uh, due to Sino-US rivalry. And uh, Japan's rearmament, uh, for example, uh, it started from the in uh, no, very early days, but uh, and once, uh, once uh, China wanted Japan to have more strong military, but now uh, Japan, uh, Sino-US uh, rivalry uh, started 
so China and Seoul began to see uh, the Japan's rearmament as a very negative move. So, uh, um, and uh, uh, Japan also ha had changed its uh, security policies from uh, very pacifistic ones to much more uh, uh, realistic one. And China saw it as uh, uh, growing nationalism and militarism. Uh, and uh, uh, Japan's military buildup is very assertive. And also oh, China began to be very worried about US-Japan intervention, uh, quote unquote, over Taiwan, uh, such as the uh, uh, SA, uh, SJ law, uh, uh, situation area surrounding Japan law uh, uh, covers, uh, actually covers Taiwan. So uh, Japan, uh, you know, uh, China uh, repeatedly said that uh, Japan should never intervene when China uses its force against Taiwan. But if China use, use, uses its force against Taiwan, it's going to be a serious issue, security issue for Japan. Uh, so it's a very, very difficult uh, uh, situation uh, for both nations. Although Taiwan is, uh, 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 is uh, are, uh, not a part of Japan, you know, but uh, still Taiwan Strait and the uh, area surrounding Taiwan are uh, very important uh, you know, uh, the transportation uh, channel for, for Japan. And uh, Japan began to uh, deploy a missile uh, uh, defense system, and uh, it may cover uh, the area surrounding Japan, which may uh, include China. So China began to be very, very, uh, uh, you know, assertive. Uh, when Japan changed its military policy. And China's view also uh, uh, changed very great, greatly. So if uh, Japan, uh, uh, you know, uh, declines economically and militarily or developed uh, and uh, uh, dependence on US strengthen or independent uh, uh, or becoming much more independent, there are three or uh, four different scenarios. For example, if Japan declines and uh, dependent on US, it's, that's going to be a very weak alliance. And uh, if Japan declines and uh, being much more independent uh, from the United States, it means that sino japanese coalition may uh, emerge. And uh, if Japan develops its military capability and dependent uh, on the United States, there will be a very strong US-Japan alliance. And uh, if Japan develops its military and independent from the United States, uh, the revival is uh, uh, going to be a revival of militarism. And very clearly, uh, the left-hand side, two scenarios are the most uh, you know, worrisome scenarios uh, for, for China. And uh, uh, the left upper side is uh, going to be uh, the uh, reality. And Japan's defense budget is also increasing every year. So we, we saw a very flat, uh, you, know, uh, uh, you know, curve a little while ago uh, compared to China. But if you take a close look at uh, uh, into the Japan's defense budget, it's actually increasing under the Abe administration. So this is also a worrisome situation for Japan. Um, and also Japan has evolved its security policies from a very pacific, pacifistic one to the, uh, to the realistic one. So um, uh, defense budget has increased in, and an arms export ban was uh, lifted. Uh, so Japan has exported its uh, military equipment to the South, uh, South China Sea related nations such as the Philippines and uh, uh, the Vietnam. Uh, with uh, who has uh, who have very tense relations with China, and uh, <clears throat> Japan established a National Security Council, and also uh, 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 you know collective self-defense right has been uh, uh, the ban on the right was lifted, and uh, the U.S.-Japan defense guidelines have been revised for many times, and uh, uh, but on the other hand. You know, the, both Japan and China still share the same uh, security interest. Uh, for example, uh, Taiwan contingency, uh, uh, you know, we, we don't want to see the Taiwan contingency, but 
uh, you know, Taiwan uh, uh, is seen as a part of China. And actually it's an, actually it's a, an, uh, virtually independent from the mainland China, but uh, still China sees it as part of, uh, uh, you know, China. And if uh, there is a, uh, any independent uh, move, uh, China uh, shows its muscle uh, to Taiwan. And Japan had a very uh, big difficulties uh, to accept that kind of military intimidation to Taiwan. So if uh, China actually attacks uh, Taiwan, Japan has to face a very difficult uh, uh, situation because there are a lot of Japanese citizens living in Taiwan. So at least they have uh, to, you know, evacuate their own uh, citizens and uh, maybe to allow US use its military base in Japan, especially in Okinawa. And also to authorize, uh, you know, uh, uh, you know, uh, support uh, to uh, U.S. military. So uh, the China's attack uh, to uh, Taiwan may trigger a U.S.-China military uh, conflicts, and Japan will be involved involved uh, in, in this. And it's a kind of chain reaction. Uh, this is a very serious situation. Uh, so danger, there is a potential danger of war between China and the US-Japan alliance. And also uh, there are uh, uh, another uh, common, you know, security challenge that's DPRK's, uh, you know, uh, uh, nuclear development. But uh, because of the time constraint, I let me skip this. Uh, so uh, the both nations have a very, uh, you know, uh, various uh, uh, problems. So uh, they are trying very hard to <clears throat> have a crisis management effort. Uh, so military hotlines, uh, we, we, we still don't have this, uh, you know, actually working military hotlines, but we are discussing this and joint working uh, group for founding uh, a maritime, maritime liaison mechanism. And this is a very important mechanism and it's enacted in 2018. So every time uh, when we see uh, a tension uh, in the, the ocean, uh, the both nations try to have communicate, communication uh, through this. So there are some uh, room for future cooperation between two nations such as, uh, uh, you know, non-military uh, uh, operations such as bilateral search and rescue operations and UN PKO's uh, cooperations, for example, uh, they you know, uh, can uh, sh uh, share their own uh, the military facilities, but so far it is very, very difficult, but there are, there are big room for both nations to have uh, cooperations. And uh, there are a lot of natural disasters, earthquake and tsunami or typhoons and so on. So, uh, you know, there are potentially, uh, there are potentially a uh, big room for cooperation and uh, some other dialogues and public health security cooperation, COVID-19 may be, become the new uh, opportunity. So China Japanese security relations, uh, uh, you know, it's a very, uh, uh, you know, uh, it has a very variety uh, and key role for, for the Sino-US relations. And, uh, 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 but it has a very strong vulnerability uh, caused by the historical burden uh, and lack of mutual strategic trust. Uh, this is a very uh, serious issue. And China is already, always very strategically, very active. And Japan is much more react, reactive and uh, uh, reactive uh, in terms of Sino-US, uh, I'm sorry, Japan-US uh, alliance. And uh, uh, both nations have different interests concerning regional security. In Taiwan's issue, Japan is standing by the United States. And uh, uh, in, in North Korea's uh, nuclear issues, uh, China is basically standing by North Korea. And in South China Sea, there are uh, multilateral, you know, uh, uh, tense uh, among the related nations. So the and uh, the uh, defense exchanges between the two nations are uh, becoming from a symbolism to the actual crisis management, because both nations should avoid the actual military conflicts. So uh, let me stop here. I'm sorry, I, I have talked 
a little bit longer than I expected, but uh, uh, this is the, the rough uh, sketch of the uh, uh, you know, Japan uh, China relations from the viewpoint of the security. Uh, let me stop here and I'd like to uh, welcome uh, questions about this. Yeah, uh, thank you. Thank you very much, Dr. Matsuda, for the enlightening lecture. Unfortunately, we are running out of time, so we yeah. can only take a few questions. Um, to open the debate, we have selected one question from the audience, being, do you believe that Suga's administration will, research, will search for remilitarization to counterbalance China, as Abi has tried? Um, uh, but, uh, you know, how, uh... Could you repeat it again? Oh, what, what was the question? Sure. Do you believe that Suga's administration will search for remetallization to counterbalance China as Abi has tried? Oh, okay. The Suga administration is the current administration after uh, Abe administration. I think it is very difficult for him to uh, pour more money to the defense issue because uh, now it's a COVID-19 uh, crisis is uh, going on. And next year, uh, uh, Japan is surprisingly going to hold the uh, uh, Olympic uh, games and uh, uh, Paralympic games. And uh, uh, the current administration of Japan is so uh, concerned about the, uh, the domestic uh, crisis management of, uh, you know, COVID, uh, caused by the COVID-19. So, um, you know, the military related uh, issue is always, always very, uh, you know, sensitive in Japan's politics because uh, uh, the opposition parties are much more uh, holding a much more pacifistic, uh, you know, uh, position. So uh, it's not easy. Uh, only a very strong and powerful uh, administration such as Abe administration uh, could uh, increase its defense budget and also change its defense related legislation. Suga administration is much more inward looking and try to have, uh, you know, a better uh, health relation, uh, health situation and, uh, you know, uh, economic, uh, you know, uh, stability. You know, there are a lot of debts. Uh, government is spending money uh, uh, for uh, dealing with uh, the COVID-19. So um, I'm not uh, foreseeing that a Suga administration is going to uh, uh, remilitarize uh, Japan. Uh, I don't think so. Yeah. Thank you very much, Professor. Um, last question. In 2013, China announced the, the East China, China Sea Air Defense Identification Zone. To what extent did this moment of great tension impact Japan's security policy? Well, um, you know, uh, to be fair, being fair, you know, Japan uh, set up uh, its own uh, air uh, defense identification uh, zone very in very early time. And China was very, very dissatisfied with the situation because Japan's uh, defense uh, ADIZ is uh, very, you know, uh, near uh, to the uh, mainland China. Uh, without any consultation. This is not fair uh, for China. But uh, if uh, China wants to uh, set up its own air uh, uh, defense identification zone, uh, China should have, have had a, a kind of a consultation with the neighboring nations because Japan's uh, ages is already there. But uh, China announced it uh, unilaterally. Uh, you know, the China uh, sent an uh, 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 you know, preliminary, uh, you know, announcement only uh, one and a half hour advancement. Uh, it's not a, it's not a consultation. It's just an, an unilateral, uh, you know, announcement. Uh, so the both nations' ages are overlapped. That's why the uh, both nations ha have to scramble their jet fighters and try to identify. Uh, the unknown aircrafts, uh, and, uh, and these uh, are a kind of waste of, uh, you know, fuels. 
and also uh, this situation should be uh, you know solved uh, through negotiations. Uh, but so far, you know, uh, China's behavior uh, uh, has not been changed, and uh, the Japanese side uh, is trying very hard to uh, persuade China to sit down and, uh, and talk about this issue. But there is uh, 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 a very difficult issue, such as Senkaku Island issue, uh, because uh, air uh, uh, zone, uh, Aegis, uh, include uh, that area. Uh, so it's really difficult for uh, both nations to make concessions. Uh, so uh, that's uh, the Aegis uh, issue is also related a maritime issue. A maritime issue is related to Senkaku Island issue. So uh, this is a, a kind of a, a problem which cannot be solved uh, through negotiations. Uh, so this is a, a, a conundrum. We cannot solve it uh, for a very long time period. Yeah. Thank you very much, Dr. Matsuda. We're heading to the end of our time, unfortunately. So I now invite Professor Pedro to end this event. Thank you very much, Luana. And Professor Matsuda, thank you very much for your lecture. It was very enlightening. Uh, better understanding of the relations between China and Japan is essential to understand contemporary international relations. So thank you very much. It was a very special night. I hope that we can welcome you here in Brazil soon. Uh, I think once again, Japan House in Sao Paulo and everyone who attended the, the event tonight and a great night for all. Thank you very much. Thank you for having me here. Thank you, good night. Thank you, Professor.